I'm a hair mineral analysis expert. I have a background in functional medicine and I educate people using HTMA testing to maximize health, erase debilitating symptoms and gain energy. I'm a multi-time kettlebell sport world champion and I'm constantly searching for high performance pros from all over the world to bring you this human optimization podcast. My name is Lisa Patel Killa. Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of the human optimization podcast. And I'm so excited to have here with us today, Kathy Davis. Kathy is a plant-based lifestyle and mindset coach and the CEO of veg inspired. Not only that, she's the author of three cookbooks, which you may have already seen the 30 minute whole food plant-based cookbook, the super easy plant-based cookbook, which sounds amazing and the budget friendly plant-based diet cookbook. Kathy empowers high achieving professionals to elevate their energy by adopting healthy living habits so they can show up at their optimum performance and achieve their goals. And we're going to talk about that today. Welcome, Kathy. Thanks, Lisa. I'm super excited to be here. Excellent. Well, we're so happy that you are going to take the time to chat with us today. And so I want you to share, because you have a really amazing story and even how Veg Inspired started that we were talking about before we got on here. And I would love for you to share a little more about your background so that people can really find out um, who you are. Absolutely. So I, I always... I hate labels, right? But I always label myself. Like I'm an ethical vegan. I've been vegan for about eight years. Mm -hmm. And about two and a half years ago, I realized that the vegan junk food pathway that I was on was not for optimum health. I was at my highest weight ever. I was tired all the time. My husband and I actually traveled the United States full time in an RV. And I had I had been running veg inspired alongside my full-time job to really inspire people to eat more plants. But when we hit the road full-time in the RV, I was going to adopt running it as a full-time business, but I didn't have the energy to do it. I didn't have the energy. I didn't have the motivation. I just, I was just blah. And that was two and a half years ago. And obviously if you're watching this live, you can see that I'm not blah anymore. Like I'm full of excitement. I'm full of energy. And it all really stemmed from switching from this super processed vegan junk food kind of diet to a more whole food, mostly unprocessed way of eating. And you, you hear me use like different terminology because I really believe that eating whole foods and, and adopting it as a lifestyle changed my life. It was yeah. a shift. It wasn't like, oh, I'm overweight. I'm going to lose. I'm going to just eat this way for a short-term diet. Like yeah. I really shifted my daily habits to eat and live a life that allowed me to step into this excited, enthusiastic and energized version of myself, which is a big shift from where I was two and a half years ago and 40 pounds heavier. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And let's talk a little bit about, um, let's talk about what you said with regards to processed vegan food, what, like, cause we think of processed foods. We think about like the crackers and all of right. All of those things. So tell us what that really means when you're uh, eating plant-based. Absolutely. Well, one, the term plant-based has been super hijacked by, by marketing and manufacturing companies. I mean, there's products that are on the market now that say plant-based and they have eggs in them. Like that's not plant-based, right? Like to me, plant-based is made with only plants, yeah. but who am I? I don't write the definitions. That's just my definition. Um, but what I found was with vegan and, you know, really adopting the, the habits and the, the lifestyle of being a vegan, there's a lot of options. There's vegan cheeses. I mean, what a time to be alive when you can literally go through Burger King and get a vegan burger. Yeah. Now, no one here really is like, well, Burger King is a healthy option, right? So obviously we know that that's not the healthiest option, but what I actually started to see happening, especially as we were traveling is that restaurants that used to create a homemade veggie burger or black bean patty started implementing the processed burgers. And so going out to a restaurant became more difficult right? It, it's not just necessarily the crackers that are labeled vegan or the Oreos, which are vegan, which again, always makes you question like what's in that <laughs> double stuff filling if it's, vegan. yeah, if it's vegan, 
but it's really the availability and accessibility of all of these amazing vegan products, which are perfect to help people stop eating animals, but not necessarily something you want to include in your day to day as the only amount of food that you're taking in, right? As the only source of nutrition, you don't really want it to be those super processed. What the heck are those ingredient names? Like, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. And so the shift really became for me was looking at ways that I could incorporate more whole food plants, like more brown rice, more quinoa, more potatoes, more spinach, more veggies, more mm -hmm. fruit, more nuts, more seeds, like all of those like the things that we want things food made out of, but actually just eating them as whole and as close to nature intended. Mm, great. Yeah. And one of the things that you talk about, and I love this is that, you, cause I always say this using food as fuel, right. And, and to think about your, your personal and professional goals with regards to that fuel that you need every day, right. We need those good, clean burning energy calories every day. And so tell us what that means to you. Tell us what that concept means. Absolutely. So one of the things that I hear all the time when I'm working with clients or just talking to people in my community is, oh, I'm, I'm so busy. I skip lunch or, oh, I'm so busy. I grab like a, I grab like a protein shake for breakfast. And it's like, what's in that? Did it have sugar in it? Cause I am all about the clean foods. And so a lot of, a lot of protein shakes, a lot of, a lot of those things, those easy accessible things are high in sugar, high in salt, high in these high inflammatory foods, mm -hmm. and also high in those quick burning, like you said, you want the long energy sustained burning calories, but we're intaking foods that burn fast. So we're like up and then we're down. And then when it's time to eat lunch, we, you know, if we're following like this diet culture mentality, maybe we just eat a small salad or maybe we skip lunch trying to cut calories and then we're hangry and run into the vending machine halfway through the afternoon or picking up a latte. Right. And so now we're quote unquote fueling ourselves with all these foods that are, are just like, you know, sugar rush or you know, an energy boost for a quick minute, but not giving us the sustained energy. Like I always used to say, you know, you know, back in, back in high school, when the track team was getting ready to run, they would carb load. It was like the whole big party. Everybody would go to somebody's house and they would carb load. Yeah. Why are we not eating those high whole food carbs? Like, I'm not saying eat your white pasta. I'm like, have a half a sweet potato and a salad for lunch. Like right. make it super easy on yourself. Sunday night, bake a bag of sweet potatoes and then pack yourself a nice little sweet potato, some beans and a nice big fresh salad. Yeah. easy peasy. Your lunch is going to sustain you through the day and that'll help you fuel your day-to-day -day goals. But think about and imagine what it'll be like to get home at five o'clock and not be ravishing and right. screaming at your family members, that. right? Because the hangry, the hangriness hits yep. right before dinner. And then everybody's in a, Oops. everybody's in a tizzy wondering mm -hmm. what's for dinner. And we all end up eating takeout. And that just, keeps the cycle going, right? Mm -hmm. These foods that don't enhance, right? They're the energy zappers that I talk about, the high oil, the high salt, the high sugar that doesn't really give us the energy and the fuel that we need from those whole foods. Yeah. Well, and this is a, this, this entire kind of what you're, you're talking about now. I mean, a lot of us create businesses based on our own personal experiences, but that experience for you is totally true with, with how you changed and how that affected your life to be able, you know, to create what you've done today. It, it did Lisa. I, you know, people will often be like, wait, you coach till nine o'clock at night. And I'm always like, I do, but I am making a difference in the yeah. lives of the people that I serve, the community that I talk about, because eating this way truly changed my life. I mean, two and a half years ago, I was like hanging out on the couch, looking at the kitchen saying, I really should get up and film a recipe video for my community, but I don't have the energy. Let's just go out to eat. Like I was yeah. living exactly what I'm talking about. And does it, does it take work? Am I perfect? Absolutely not. But I, I live by the philosophy of intention mm -hmm. and really, really making choices out of intention. What is your goal? You want to hit six figures. You want to serve more people. You want to show up as the best mom or dad, or, you know, whatever your role is, whatever you want, 
are you making healthy living choices that support that? Right. Are you making them intentionally? And if you're not, what's one small change you can do right now? Can you add a second serving of vegetables? Can you intend to eat lunch? Can you change out that goldfish and Coca-Cola afternoon snack for, you know, some fruit and maybe a sparkling water or just water and some fruit, veggies and hummus, like really thinking about those little easy tweaks, but doing so with intention. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I find that, well, and so perfect opportunity as you have been traveling in an RV across, like literally mobile. So I always have conversations with people and they'd be like, oh, well, you know, it's just too busy, you know, whether it's food prep or whatever it is, I was just too busy and the days are too long and you're right. They're skipping lunch or they're having, you know, a mediocre thing they've thrown together that's processed or what have you, but living proof right here, if you're watching, you know, that you're literally traveling, but you're doing this, it's not hard. So what can you do on the go to support the people? Because we are busy. We live in a busy society now, right? Everything's go, go, go. And, and I think some people sometimes just need to realize that there is a way to be able to be, make those healthy choices, even though we're really busy. That that's a great question because a lot of times we find ourselves in, you know, small little towns outside the national parks that don't have what one, you know, what you might think we need as vegans. But they do have all the whole foods that we eat, right? They have the potatoes, they have the brown rice, they have the beans, they have the fruit, they have the veggies. And so what I tell people is look at how you can make familiar foods fit into your life. Look at how you can make foods that you already are cooking fit into your busy schedule and look at your schedule. Are mm -hmm. there certain days of the week where you have that like super crunch point where everybody in your household is running in a different direction, or you're always working late, or you yeah. work and then go to a committee meeting or whatever your afternoon or extracurricular activities are, look at those days and plan ahead. Yeah. Maybe, like I said, it's baking some sweet potatoes. Maybe it's looking at a restaurant menu to see what you can get that's going to power you through the rest of the day. And again, thinking on terms of low processed, low fat, low, not low fat, like more like low processed oil or, right. you know, low yeah. sugar, low salt, like yeah. not really, you know, you're not going to pick the, the hamburger over, you know, a nice quinoa grain salad, right? What you're, what you're going to choose is the food that's going to sustain you for the day. And increasing your fruits and vegetables. I was mm. so shocked to, to read. And I guess I shouldn't have been shocked because I've read all the books on plant-based eating, but they, they just posted a study, I don't know, six months ago that talked about increase in productivity up to 25% with people wow. who are eating up to, up to five to seven servings of vegetables and fruits. And I was like, what would you do? Like 25%, that's two hours of an eight hour workday. Yeah. What would that's you do incredible. if you could get done the work in six hours instead of eight? Like if you could really level up that productivity or do more in the eight hours that you set aside, how would that affect your, your side hustle, your business, your life? Like how would that help you really optimize the way you're living? Right. If you yeah. could, maybe it's just, like I said earlier, a simple swap, mm -hmm. swapping out the goldfish for, you know, some oranges or carrots or something else that, that satisfies you. Mm -hmm. And then yes. the other big piece about traveling is it goes back to my whole philosophy on intention. Like you have to know what your intentions are. And I always tell people like part of my story was we set out on this, this adventure to travel the country. I was like, oh, I can showcase all the cool vegan restaurants around the United States. Yeah. Well, when I was eating at all those restaurants, all those super processed foods, I was gaining all this weight right? It wasn't, it wasn't mutually beneficial to me in the restaurant right. because I was, my health was not winning from yeah. showcasing all these restaurants. And what I found was I had to really shift how I communicated my message. And right after I made the decision to really clean up the way that I eat and made a commitment to eating less processed foods, yeah. we had scheduled a trip to Disney to literally film all the new plant-based restaurants in Epcot. 
And I had to have a whole conversation with myself about like, what's my intention here? Yeah. What's the most important part? Because truly the most important part was my health, mm -hmm. not necessarily sharing all the new vegan options at Disney. And yeah. so I was, I really had to have a, you know, it really came down to the decision of what's more important. And that's what I, you know, I always want to ask people like, yes, income producing activities, the hustle, all of that is important, but taking time for yourself, even if it's 15 minutes just to eat an energizing salad, you know, a salad bowl with grains and nuts and seeds and veggies, just a few minutes to eat, to mindfully eat that will give you more energy and more productivity later in the day. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And I find that, well, and you know, uh, it's one of the, the more acceptable ways for us to self-medicate is caffeine, <laughs> right? <laughs> the overuse of caffeine, the lineups in the takeout or, uh, you know, drive through for us to feel energized when really, you know, all that's doing is, is stimulating our already tired adrenals, right? And, and what we should be doing is fueling them with the right nutrients. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, and, but, but the caffeinated beverages and, and things are accessible. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. we're an on the go society that demands fast, fast and quick and easy food. Yeah. That's that comes together quickly. That doesn't require a lot of prep. And we want these energy drinks and these power, you know, and we're missing those key pieces that really, really do fuel our body mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and really do give us back our health and our, and allow us to live in that most energy energized state. Yeah. And so, uh, I, I want to touch on something, um, with regards to just meal planning. So in general, and so obviously there's, uh, I want to keep it as simple as possible. Cause I do think sometimes meal planning is a bit, um, is a bit of a confusing thing for people, right? Well, I don't know how much of this or that, or, how, you know, and so what's kind of a very, what would be a very simple guide, uh, guideline for you based on, you know, what your plate would look like or, or what you would add for obviously the nutrients and, and the vitamins and minerals that you need out of that food. Absolutely. So I follow uh, the starch solution, which is by Dr. McDougall's uh, way of eating. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And so all of my plates are 50% unrefined starches and 50%, mm -hmm. you know, non-starchy veggies. So we're looking at brown rice, sweet potatoes, beans, lentils, mm -hmm. uh, squash, corn, um, occasionally I'll eat pasta yeah. and and then quinoa on one side. And then the other side of my plate is some version of vegetables. Maybe it's a salad, mm -hmm. maybe it's a veggie soup, maybe it's, um, roasted broccoli, maybe it's Brussels sprouts tossed in a little maple balsamic, you know, like really kind of, for me, it's very simple. And then I eat, uh, nuts, avocados and whole fat foods. I don't, I don't eat oil. Um, yeah. I eat the whole food mm -hmm. really leveraging the, the nutrients and the fiber in those foods rather than, than in taking the calories from oil, yeah. um, which always leads to the question, like, how the heck do you cook veggies without oil? Like, how do you roast them? And I toss them either in aquafaba, which is the juice from a can of chickpeas or veggie broth Ooh. to roast. And then okay. I usually saute in water. Mm -hmm. My method is to get a nonstick skillet. I use cast iron is, high, is like medium high heat yep. and practice with onions. Onions are pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. you, you can overcook them and burn them, but usually you can cook them and they get a little brown and then you can put them in a soup, right? So you're yep. not wasting food. Yep. Um, and you throw them in the pan and let them sizzle. And then just as they're starting to stick add a couple tablespoons of water and it allows them to kind of sweat and saute, yep. and then just keep doing the, um, tablespoons of water until they're shimmery and they're at the te texture that you want. And then add yep. the rest of your veggies and cook away. Fantastic. I, and that's so funny too. I didn't even, I guess they never think about using the juice from the beans. I didn't even think about that. I use the juice for chickpeas in, yeah. um, roasting and I also use it in salad dressings. Oh, so if you're looking okay. for a vinaigrette, yeah, I will use a little water and a little bit of the chickpea juice to really, cause it, it has a thickness to it. Yeah. And so it helps it's the salad dressing stick to the lettuce. 
Oh, that's so smart. Oh my so that's, goodness. that's been like the one way that I really kind of leverage, you know, you don't want to dump out that, like, I think the aquafaba is gold. Yeah. <laughs> the chickpea. yeah so yeah. I, I make salad dressings and toss my veggies in it or brush, brush like a squash or something with yeah. it when I roast mm -hmm. them. That yep. is a great idea. And so, so that leads me into, because I am super, I want to hear what this is because again, we're on the run. We're always busy. You know, we, we, you know, family going here and there and soccer and whatever the case might be. So obviously you've got three amazing cookbooks. And so you've had hundreds, maybe thousands of recipes, right? Tell us about a few high energy recipes that you love that are just easy for busy people on the go to be able to manage and put together. Absolutely. So I love smoothies for on the go. Yeah. Um, I, I'm always like, you know, it's one of my hesitations though. If you're super, if you're really trying to watch your weight, a lot of doctors will say, don't drink your calories. So I always like on the air of you, you know, can you thicken it up with some oats? Can you slow down the way you eat it? Cause if you think about everything you put in the smoothie, you're not going to suck it down in like 10, 10 seconds. Right. Whereas yeah. a smoothie, you're like, and it's gone. So I like smoothies. I love to add white beans to them to oh. level up the protein and yeah. give them, make them a little more satiating and a little more energizing. Mm -hmm. Um, I also like oats and I, I often will make an overnight oat. It can be put in a container to go. You can eat it in the carpool line. You can mm -hmm. eat it, you know, on the, if you're taking public transport, or if you are, you know, sitting at your desk, I mean, I like to be more mindful, but if that's the, where you eat and you yeah. need an energizing, I like oats also like quinoa. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a recipe on veginspire.com that is an apple cinnamon quinoa and it's packed Ooh. such a great breakfast punch yeah. of protein and flavor yeah. Yeah. and it can be made ahead and packed in containers so that you can just grab it, go and heat it up or you can eat it cold. Yeah. My favorite lunch. And I actually, um, work with a couple clients that travel in hotels. Mm -hmm. And so this is like, you could literally do this anywhere. Baked sweet potatoes, which you could microwave. I'm not a huge fan of microwaving, but in a pinch, it's, we'll go with yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, if you're, it's, if it's takeout or fast food over a microwave potato, we'll go with the microwave potato, black beans. You can just open up a can. So when you're buying them, make sure you have a can opener. If you're traveling, um, so baked, baked sweet potato, black beans, and then you can actually buy store-bought fresh salsa in the produce mm -hmm. that usually has a few ingredients, not overly, you know, overly loaded with lots of stuff. Yeah. And then store-bought guacamole. Ooh, literally can be ready in minutes yeah. if you plan ahead. So, you know, when you're really thinking about how to make the food fit your busy life, my first tip, and I'm a meal planning pro, it's the number one tip of success, my number one success system that I use with, with my clients is look at your schedule. If, if you know that breakfast is not the time to be making food, make it the night before, Yeah, make it on the weekend, like really kind of look for where you can make your, make it easy for yourself to add more plants or to add more energizing foods in. Um, so those are my favorite recipes. And then one of the things that I always tell people is if you can throw it on a sheet pan and cook it that I start there too. So sweet potatoes, some cauliflower, broccoli florets, yeah. maybe some chickpeas, throw them in the oven at like 400, let them kind of roast all together. Even the beans, they get a nice mm -hmm. texture and then mm -hmm. drizzle on some clean barbecue sauce, you know, maybe yeah. an organic barbecue sauce that doesn't use high fructose corn syrup or something. Yes. Yes. Well, and so high fructose corn syrup, holy cow, it is in everything. So if you guys everything. are watching or listening and you haven't read labels lately, you definitely need to, because it is in everything. But the other thing I wanted to come back to, as you were talking about, um, the oats and then got into the quinoa. So veg inspired, uh, website, right. Go there for uh, some great recipes, but ancient grains. A lot of people forget about how much protein they have, like amaranth, millet, right? All of those ancient grains are so great and they're packed with protein. Yeah. And, and they're easy to cook up 
And yeah. this is, this is one of the things that I didn't even, I wasn't even really thinking. So a lot of those ancient grains and I am not sponsored by Bob's Red Mill, but you can get them on at Bob's Red Mill and they yeah. have tons of recipes oh, for how to cook great. their specific grains. So, yes. you know, when you hear somebody talking about amaranth or millet and you're like, gosh, I don't even know what I would do with that. Like, you know, yeah. if you can buy it from a company, check their website to see if they have recipes that can help you because yeah. That we went through a whole ancient grain phase when we lived in our house and we had more pantry space and we would, we tried all the different grains and we loved spelt flakes. Spelt became one of our, um, like our go-tos. And then I really like Frica. I, I really don't even started, think I know what that is. It's a cracked wheat. And I really started to eat it a lot and yeah. use it in like casseroles. And it just adds like a really good flavor and texture. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, that's so interesting. But yeah, I find I, even athletes, I, right. It's such a great way to just be able to get in more protein. Um, and so, so with regards to, so I want to touch on one more and I know you're going to have an answer to this. Um, this is out of left field. You're not going to expect it, but if, because I do have quite a number of, of athletes that follow the podcast, um, tell, give me even just one recipe post-workout right? We want to replace glycogen stores. We want to be able to, to just let the body have all those nutrients because it's depleted after training. What's one of your favorite, like healthy, just kind of like on the go post-workout snacks? Gosh, you know, what's funny is before I was vegan, I'd be like, you should just drink chocolate milk. Like <laughs> that was always my answer for everything. And I know that that's not really like, a, like that's, I read that. And that's what I, that's what I yeah. thought. But um, really what the things that I like, like yeah. we love to bike, we love to hike. Mm -hmm. And this is so, like you said, out of left field, like this is such a random thing. Yep. I love the iciest cold coconut water I can get. Like that is like, like my husband and I used to store it in the, like we put it yes. in the freezer before we went for a long bike ride so that we would get home and it would be like this icy cold, like yep. coconut water that you could put in. So you know, we would make smoothies out of that. We would just drink it. Something else that we really, really liked, and we don't have a, a rice cooker anymore, but we actually used to eat rice and we would put veggies yeah. in the top to steam it. Yeah. And then we would add, you know, avocado, like adding in like the different, I'm going to call it macros for a lack of better way to yes. describe it, yeah. but like your carb, your mm -hmm. broccoli, usually broccoli, cause it has a good protein. It's a good mm -hmm. protein source, yep. the avocado, and then usually some kind of nuts or beans. I love lentils also as like a way to kind of get both the starchiness and that protein to yep. pack it in. But, yep. but honestly, for me, the things that are most satisfying after a workout or after like a really, you know, intense biking or energy exerting activity, like hiking or biking yeah. are fresh fruits and vegetables that have lots of water. Yeah. It just helps to rehydrate. Like I, we will keep yeah. like clementine orange, clementine oranges in our cooler and just easy things that are already packaged. Like mother nature had just knew you were going to want those while you were out in the, <laughs> out in the hiking, exactly. out hiking a national park. Um, so we really try to do more of those like colorful, energizing fruits and vegetables too. Perfect. Yeah. And you know, you hit the nail right on the head there with the, with uh, coconut water, because one of the biggest things that we burn outside of magnesium, because again, we're coming back into mineral territory is potassium and coconut water is so critical for potassium support, right? So electrolytes, I think that's amazing and, uh, and good tip and reminder for people too. And so tell us cookbooks, where can people find your cookbooks? Are they on your website? Can they get them on Amazon? Give us a rundown of where we can find those. Yeah. So they are on my website, but they are also all available on Amazon. Perfect. Um, and the fun part about it is they kind of bust the three myths of plant-based eating the 30 minute one busts time. Yes. The super easy busts effort and energy Love and it. the budget friendly busts expense because all of those things are excuses that people make about why they can't eat plant-based. And so we really wanted to make plant-based eating accessible mm -hmm. for everyone. And yeah. when you start to look at, you know, the, I mean, the budget friendly, I mean, I did that a year and a half ago and food prices are kind of wild right now. So yes, that's we'll true. see, but when you start to look at the difference in prices, like 
yes, when you see vegan on something, it's probably specialty and it is $10 for whatever. Right. But when you buy a potato or brown rice or dried mm -hmm. beans, they're much more budget friendly. So really kind of tapping into that. Yeah. So all of those can be found on our website. Excellent. That's excellent. And we will drop uh, your website, of course, and those references to the books, cookbooks in the description, whether you're watching on your favorite podcast host or, uh, or sorry, listening, because you're not going to be watching, listening on your favorite podcast host or watching us on YouTube. So make sure you check those out. I am excited to start adding more plants because that's the one thing, you know what, honestly, I probably don't eat enough uh, plants, I'm not going to lie. And, uh, it's one of those things where, and I have no excuse anymore because we're all busy, <laughs> right? We're all busy. <laughs> we just have to make time for it. Yeah, we do. And you know, start small, add yeah. them as a snack, add them, add some berries to your breakfast. Like yeah. just start with one small change and just build mm -hmm. upon it as you, as you get more ideas. Like I said, sometimes it's just two servings of vegetables instead of one. Exactly. And I love the idea of overnight oats because think of all the beautiful fruits, uh, you can put onto that in the morning and just be able to have that, um, and be satiated with that in the AM and fuel your day. So I think that's an amazing idea. So if you're not doing that, I definitely think that that's something you might want to try. And so Kathy, thank you so much, such great information. And wow, I, I am amazed that you are literally traveling, um, the nation, uh, to just, you know, better people's lives and be able to help people with regards to, uh, good, clean eating. I think that is amazing. And so thank you for being here with us today and sharing, and thank you for listening on your favorite podcast host. Give this episode a like, and if you're on YouTube watching, then make sure you subscribe to my channel. There's a brand new episode every two weeks and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to today's show. Head over to lisapatelkilla.com to gain access to some amazing free resources that will help you gain energy, erase debilitating symptoms, and be the best version of you. Remember to give this podcast a like and follow me on social media at Lisa Patel Killa. I'm here every two weeks with a brand new episode of the Human Optimization Podcast. Until next time.